Huh? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I just got a one question for you. Are you glad to be here this morning? Are you glad to be here this morning? Yes, indeed. See, I, I'm so glad that it doesn't depend on the numbers in the house of God. I, the scripture that I read say where two or three, and we got more than two or three. Amen? Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us have a word of prayer, and then the pastor will come up and greet you. Our Father and our God, we're just so thankful for another blessed and holy Sabbath day. Lord, you have brought us through another week. You have blessed us, our families, Lord. You have provided for us and protected us. And now, Lord, we gather together on this holy Sabbath day to sing your praises, to worship you, to give you thanks, to give you honor, to give you glory. In the worthy name of Jesus, Lord, we do ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I, I was expecting the praise people to start to praise, you know, but I guess since they want me to do it, <clears throat> I, I've been gone for three weeks, been on 10 different airplanes, and each one took off and landed safely. I can't get no help up in here. Amen. That means God's been good. What do you say? Amen. It is just a blessing to be back with my family, with uh, God's people. And, uh, and, and, and if you are visiting with us this morning, uh, I want you to know, if you, if you don't know, me have never met me. I am uh, between Steve Wonder and Ray Charles. I, I, I'm related to them, uh, and I'm gonna just leave it like that. Amen. But we are glad that you are in the place. What do you say? Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Minister Nick, I know you. You you guys are ready to lead us, so we're we're gonna do. We're going to do our praise and worship. Can you get up on your feet if you came up in this house today to tell God how good he is, how much you love him, how you came to praise him, and how no one, nothing is going to stop you from waving holy hands this morning, stumping your feet if you need to, putting your hands together and clapping. If that's what it takes, and, and, and if you are not emotional, and it doesn't take all of that for you, that's all right. You can sit in your seat. But one thing I want you to do is don't leave here today without worshiping our God. What do you say? Amen. Come on, let us praise him together. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Today is a day of jubilee, berean, and faith. Say hallelujah. 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 Jesus is coming soon. Brother Nick is going to lead us out this morning. Amen. How many of you know that there's no God like our God? There is no God like Jehovah. Behold, he comes riding on the cloud. Shining like the sun at the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Come on, put your hands together. Has he made a way for you? Has he opened doors for you?
All right, how many of you know that we serve a holy God? Yes. We serve a holy God. There's nobody like our God. Nobody, nobody. What a privilege it is. You are holy.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is holy, oh so holy. Our hymn this morning is 518. If you would stand to your feet, we're standing on the promises this morning. Hymn 518. In your bulletin, there's also the words. Uh, I saw in the bulletins the words were there. Standing on the promises, all three verses. Let's stand on God's promises this morning. Let us sing. Standing on the promises of Christ. Put your hands together and bless the Lord in this place. Are you standing on the promises? I said, are you standing on the promises? Okay, maybe you don't know what the promises are. Here's one, 1 John 4 and verse 4. Greater, can, can you turn me down just a tad? Greater is he that is in you than he 
that's in the word. Turn to you in the world. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm standing on the promises. Okay, maybe you're not standing on that. Here's another one. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn because you are the heritage of God. Is anybody standing on the promises today? Okay, maybe, 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 maybe that is not good enough for you. Here's another one, Isaiah 68. If thou take away thy foot from the Sabbath, from knowing thy own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor him. Then shall thou uh, be called, then shall I cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm standing on the promises. I, I can't get no help up in here. Hey, here's another one. And I saw a new heaven. That's Revelation 21. And a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven as a bride adorned to meet her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he shall be with them, and God himself shall be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears. Somebody say all tears. From their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither pain nor Sorrow, neither shall there be any more crying, for the former things are passed away. That is the promise of God, and that's what we are standing on this morning. I don't know about you, but I'm standing on the promises. Now, I'm going to ask that question again. If you are standing on the promises, can you just make some noise up in here and shout hallelujah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to bless God for the praise team. Uh, I know it's not preaching time, but I feel, I feel a little sermon rising up in just about now because of these three testimonies that I have. Uh, 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 one of them is uh, he woke me up this morning. Uh, now, I know we're going to do testimony time, but uh, your testimony may be he just uh, expounded your portfolio, your stock portfolio on Wall Street, and uh, uh, he, he just gave you a raise of a Another hundred thousand dollars on your job, he, yeah, but 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 here's my second testimony, Sister Adams. He woke me up this morning. Uh, that's that's that's. And my third testimony, Sister Wolf, he woke me up this morning because it doesn't matter how big your house is, how nice your car, how heavy your stock. Portfolio is if you don't wake up in the morning, <coughs> nothing matters. Uh, do, do I have two other witnesses in here who can just say he will, he will, he will, he will, he will me up this morning? Amen, amen. This is that time when we want to welcome our visitors. I, I have been gone for the last three weeks, and I'm just so excited to come back. I feel the energy in here and, and, and because I brought my, my energy with me. The Holy Spirit has been with me on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and oh bless his name today Sabbath morning he, he just pumped me full of fire. 
I, I feel like Jeremiah with all the hell the enemies put me through this week. I, I didn't feel like praying, preaching, or singing, but his word, somebody say his word. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Oh, I wish I had a praying church up in here this morning. I, I can't help but bless his name. So we want to welcome you to the Berean Faith worship experience uh, on behalf of my able colleague, the elder pastor, Daria Hoy, the faith leadership, and uh, the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church here at 5100 Osborne Avenue uh, for this season. We want to welcome you to our worship experience today. Now, I'm going to start with uh, the members of faith in Berea, because without you, our worship experience would not be what it is. So if you are a attending faithful member of the Berean faith worship experience, put your hands together and just welcome yourself in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. They're in the house. They're in the house. Now, now, if you got your names on the book, but you haven't been so faithful and, and, and attending, but you are here today, let's put our hands for those people. Amen. Can we, can we bless them? Amen. 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 Now, this is the time that I want to welcome our visitors. If you're visiting with us, you are not a part of this community. You came from out of town or you live here. Somebody just invited you. You go to another church. You're part of another commune but you found yourself desiring to be in the presence of Yahweh with his people this morning, we don't want to take for granted that you could have been anywhere else doing anything you chose to do, but you are here this morning with us. Can you please stand on your feet so we can just roll out the Berean faith carpet and welcome you and just make a lot of noise in here this morning because you came to be with us. Uh-oh, I, I hear, I hear, I hear noise up in here, up in here. We, we, we bless God for you. Listen, let me, let me do this. I, I, I can see you. Uh, I'm sight impaired, but I haven't lost my vision. I, I, I need one of my deacons to come take this mic. I want you to tell us who you are, where you're from, and how you Ended up here this morning so, so we can know who you are. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name, my name is Samuel Laws. I, um, I don't feel like a visitor, but I'm just passing through. All right. Oh, come on now. Let's bless God. Amen. Brother Samuel Laws, amen. God bless you, brother. Your, your brother is a mover and shaker in this community, and we bless God that you are here to worship with him and his family, which is all of us. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's just one. Oh, man. Just one person. You know what? The Bible says heaven rejoices. Over one soul. Can we put our hands together and join heaven? Amen. 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 Now, now, this is that time when we fellowship together. We hug. We shake hands. We tell people we love them. We miss them. And I know about 80 people just going to rush up here and just hug me because they, they just want me to know how much they miss me and I miss them. Come on, let's do a, let's do a hug and shake and greet song as we love on each other. You may now get up and move around the room and just, there, there it is, there it is, hallelujah. <laughs>
Jesus in me, the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, the Jesus. How are you? How are you, Sister Bell? And God bless you. So easy, easy to love. Hey, the Jesus in me. And the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me. Hey, hey. Good to be seen, brother. So easy. All right, come on, let's sing that song together as we go back to our seats. The Jesus in me, the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you so easy. Hey, 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 so easy. Hey, so easy. Amen, amen. What time is it? Testimony time. Now, I know sometimes, uh, this is all family in here, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. I know sometimes we'd be all frowning up, upset, because testimony be taking a little long. But I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have a testimony, Something already wrong. See, see, testimonies is all about what God has done for you. So if you don't have a testimony, what you're telling us as a church, as a body, he didn't do nothing for you this week. And now, I don't know about you. But I'm going to just give you a quick one how God worked for me. Now, for most of you don't know, I drive a school bus. And last year, I picked a better route, but the bus I got didn't have AC. And I thought to myself, well, how bad could it be? And when I tell you that they had some days there between August and September where the temperature, I'm not talking about the heat index, the temperature was 105 and 106. And then poor kids were getting on the bus and saying, Mr. Landry, it's hot on here. I said, don't you think I know that? <laughs> I said, but the only thing you said wrong, it's not getting hot. It is hot. So anyway, I, my supervisor had promised me he was going to get me an air-conditioned bus. Well, last year, that air-conditioned bus never came. So this year, when I went back there to pick it, I had the same old bus. So I talked to him. I said, now, you know, you told me last year you're going to get me an air-conditioned bus. Well, I'm looking. 
He said, Landry, I'm looking, and, and, and I, I'm going to have to get in touch with you. And I said, yeah, okay. So I took my papers, and I went on home. Next morning, I got a call. And I want you to know that yours truly going to be driving in air condition this year. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And not only did he bless me, but he also blessed my wife. Now she got an air conditioned bus. You tell me we don't serve a mighty God. You know, and, and sometimes we think of that as small things. But there ain't no small things with God. God will give his people what, he, what they need when they need it. Amen? Who else got a testimony they'd like to share? Turn off the mic. I love y'all. Y'all are beautiful. I am happy to be in God's house again. Last week I was at the funeral services for Pastor Hoy's brother and the strength and the, and the, the love that she was able to show yes. and speak over her brother. I would have fallen apart. I would have been crippled by that because I have just my one brother, Paul. But it just reminded me to keep loving my brother, keep ministering to him. Uh, also, so you just said it. And I'm going to tell you that it's true. God always shows up for us. Right. Three weeks ago, got a call, got an email from one of the uh, customers I cleaned for. My business is going under. I can't keep you cleaning anymore. I have to let you go. I said, okay, God, this is going to make me $400 short of my rent at the end because I budget three months in advance. I know how my money flows. I said, this is going to make me short, God, but I trust you. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to do it. Last Friday, rent was due on the first, so that was this week, but last Friday, I get a phone call from one of my real estate agents who I clean houses for, Priority. Paul, I got a house for you, but it's, it's going to take you about two hours to clean. Well, I don't charge a lot of money to clean a house. I charge about 75 for the first two hours, and I was like, okay, well, that's something, God. That's better than nothing, but God said, I need you to swallow your pride, and I need you to tell him that you just lost one of your cleaning jobs. I said, you want me to do what? He said, confession is good for the soul. You got to get that pride out of the way. Yeah. This is a test that you trust me. I said, okay, God. Sir, I just wanted you to know I'm looking for a new uh, business to clean. I don't want to clean a house. I want to clean a business. I, that way I can do it on Sundays. And he said, okay, I'll look out for you. And if I know of anything, I'll take care of you. What's going on? God said, tell him what's going on. I said, well, I'm a little short on my rent. I didn't tell him the amount. I didn't tell him the amount. I never said how much. All right, now. I said, I'm a little short on my rent. And if you could help me, I'd greatly appreciate that. He said, okay, thank you uh, for your time. And I'll, I'll get back with you on details for that house. He hung up the phone. He Venmo me $500 immediately. Have mercy. So then I'm like, wait, what? Wait, whoa, wait, slow down. What are we doing? Because see, that pride starts creeping up on me. I don't deserve that. What are you doing? God said, I, I told you, trust me. I sent him a text. Did you mean to send me that money? Because I'm shocked that God do what he say he's going to do sometimes. And so he said, you have worked for me for the last 20 years. You have discounted people who I told you to go clean the house multiple occasions. The last occasion was a senior citizen who her husband just died and you didn't charge that lady but $75 and you stayed there five hours. The fact that you would sacrifice over and over and over, I should have always been blessing you. So take care of your rent and thank you so much for being a good person that you are. Amen. What? So I just give God the praise today. Every time I need God, God always shows up Amen. for me. Amen. Anybody else? There we go. Good morning, saints. Um, I just want to share with you, God has been giving me things to write for years, all the way back to the early 1990s. And I've kept all these things, and so I was impressed to put it in a book. Mm. And, I, and I've been asking around to different agencies and everybody charges an arm, a leg, a head, and everything. Everybody. Don't have enough money to do that. So the Lord put me in contact with, with uh, one agency, and they could do the book, but they had nobody to edit. And so um, 
I got in touch with another agency, and they said, we can do everything for you. And it does not cost a lot of money. So the Lord has blessed, and over the years since, like I said, the early 90s, I've been writing. So this month, my book will come out. And so I give God thanks for it. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Um, I just want to say I, I um, didn't really want to give this testimony, but God is not going to let me sit still. And it's so funny that Trudy walked up to me and asked me what she asked me this morning. So the only person that I told was Pastor Hoy and my grandmother. So um, I'm considered the mother hen at my Walmart job. Everybody comes to me about advice and whatnot. So this Monday I had one of the people who I had given Bible studies to to come in the cash office and she was cussing and upset and this and that and I told her, I said, you know, at least you got to be careful. Don't let people bring you out of character. If you did something for somebody and God told you to do it, whether they give it back to you now or not, you did it from your heart. So a little while later, um, she was getting ready to get into an altercation with someone and of course Mother Hen, they come to the office, I come out, I run over, I say, hey y'all, we're not going to do this at work, calm down. Y'all stopped cursing. She turned around and started cursing me. So it got so bad until she got up in my face and I kind of pushed her back off of me and everybody came out and they told me to go back to the cash office. I went to the cash office. So my manager came in there and his face was red and he was like, Miss Tess, what happened? So I told him, he said, well, we already heard about what happened, but we have to get everything written up and we're going to have to put you on suspension. I said, okay, no problem. Everybody was, oh, Lord, Miss Tess, Miss Tess. So I was like, y'all, it's okay. So by the time I get ready to make it home, the police called me. And um, he said, um, is this Tajiri? I said, Tajiria. He said, yeah. I said, this is she. He said, um, this is officer such and such. Um, I needed to speak with you um, about something that happened at Walmart in your produce department. I said, no problem. He said, where are you? I'll come to you. I said, no, I'll come to you. Where are you? He said, I'm just leaving the store. I said, okay, let's meet at McDonald's. So when I got there, um, he was waiting for me. He walked to my truck, and he was talking, and he said, before we go any further, I have to read you your rights. I said, no problem. And when he finished, he said, do you need a lawyer present? I said, no, I don't need a lawyer. I'm going to give you the truth. I don't need a lawyer for that. So by the time I finished telling him, he said, ma'am, I want to cut you off. He said, I saw the film. I saw the altercation. I saw what happened. I'm not going to do any charges against you because she was in your space and I see you moved her out your space. I saw you walk off twice. So we're going to call this, or, you know, I'm going to call your manager and let him know. But I want to say that to say when it, when it first happened, I was in shock. When I got home, I may have cried tears for about 10 minutes, but then I started laughing because I was like, Lord, there is a purpose for this. So before all this happened, I spoke with a girl who had been at Walmart for about three and a half years and they never would put her on full time. Well, I told her, I said, before you go put in applications everywhere, our plans are not God's plans all the time. Just give it a second. And she was getting ready to go work at the school system in the cafeteria. So she called me that Tuesday. She said, Miss Tess, I just wanted to tell you I need your help. I said, what you need? She said, they just made me full time. They're training me to do the job that you were doing. I said, well, that is so wonderful, Trenice. I said, just call me if you need me. Now, when I hung that phone up, I'm going to be honest with you. The flesh in me said, don't call me about nothing. I ain't finna train nobody. might not have a job. But the Lord said no. So when I talked to her that night, I said, Trenice, you know, God does things the way he sees fit. I said, you've been on that job three and something years. I just came on seven months ago. They gave me full time. But he did what he needed to do for her. So through my issues, he gave her a full-time job where she didn't have to worry about taking care of her kids anymore. She didn't have to look at trying to find a second job to take care of her kids. So I say that to say this as well. My husband has a business that he was doing on the Sabbath, and I had been telling him, you know, Jerry, you need to trust God to do what he said he's going to do. Well, for the last three weeks, my husband has been doing his bar meat business in Faraday on Fridays, and we were blessed last weekend to do such a, a great job that we were able to give our school supplies on yesterday from our pockets with two other people. And we were able to bless families. He did very good yesterday, and he sent his tithe to church this morning. 
So I say I don't have anything to say but God is good. I don't have a testimony to say that he put $5,000 in my bank account or that I have a check coming next week. But what I will say is that God says sometimes he has to use us in order to bless other people. And he also has to use us to bring the ones that we love to recognize who he says he is. So I thank him for whatever he's planning on doing and however he's going to do it. And I just want to say if you're going through something, even though it may look bad, this is the time when you step on the devil's neck and you say, you know what, this is just part of that trial and tribulation that going into the fire, coming out gold. Amen. Amen. And then what else? Well, beloved, it's prayer time. You know... It has become a cliche among Christians when we say we got to pray much. But I want to tell you this morning that it's not a cliche. Why do we have to pray much? Because there's so much to pray for. The devil is going to turn up his attacks on God's people. He's going to attack their relationships. He's going to check, attack their livelihood. He will try to attack our health and well-being. Because his objective is to discourage us. He wants us to get angry with God. He wants us to get to the point where we are doubting God. To the point where we don't fully trust God. But God has promised he will never forsake us or leave us. So that's why Satan keeps his attacks on us because he wants us to get angry and leave God. Let us pray. Father, as we come before your holy throne on this Sabbath morning, We come, Lord, with a mouth full of praise and hearts full of thanksgiving. It was you who woke us up this morning, Lord. Put food on the table. Granted your safe traveling mercies as we went to and fro about our daily task. Gave us a peaceful night's nice rest. Open our eyes this morning, Lord, to see another day. None of this comes from us, Lord. We have no power until we connect with you. You are promising your word, Lord, that with you all things are possible. And we see it before us, Lord, because as we listen to these testimonies, we can see how you have blessed and delivered your people, Lord. Yes, we go through some things in this world. Uh, there's crime all around us, Lord. Lord, there are people who have no care, no feelings for others. But that's not what you called us to do or be, Lord. We are to be like Jesus, Lord. When we, when we see hurt, we try to help it. When we see the hungry, Lord, we must try to feed them. Stop focusing in on self and start looking at the welfare of others, Lord. We got to learn how to pray for each other. Pray for our community, Lord. Pray for our children. Pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ because, Lord, we know we have an enemy out there who's trying to destroy us. He wants us to take our eyes and our mind off of you. But, Lord, help us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Have your way with us, Lord. And help us not to be so focused on self, 
but be focused upon your goodness, upon your love, upon your mercy, upon the sacrifice that you have made for our salvation. There's nothing, Lord, that the enemy can do to us or take away from us that you can't restore. Help us to always remember that, Lord, we are just pilgrims here. This is not our final home. Help us, Lord, to just yield to your spirit, understanding that we just here for a specific amount of time, but yet, Lord, we looking forward to coming home and spending eternity with you throughout the ceaseless ages. Thank you, Lord, for blessing your people, opening doors for your people, Lord, providing for your people, even though they go through trials and tribulation. Lord, you are with them and you have seen them through it. Continue to be with us, Lord. You have called us for a specific purpose, Lord. Help us to yield to your Holy Spirit. Embrace the purpose for which you have called us. Die to self and live for others. Then, Father, I'm going to ask you this morning that you look down upon the sick and the shadowy. Please, Father, raise them up off their sick beds. Heal them and comfort them. Lord, we have bereaved among us this morning. Oh, death is a hard thing for us, Lord, but, but we do understand it's not the final act, Lord. Because when Jesus is seen coming in the clouds of glory, Lord, your righteous folk are going to be raised. Help us to hold on to that hope, Lord. And Lord, I'm going to ask a special prayer upon the bishops of faith in Berean. As they lead your flock, Lord, just give them a double portion of your spirit. Let them speak to us words of hope, words of life. Words that keep us from growing weary of well-doing. Strengthen them and guide them, Lord, because sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that they are above the temptations that we face. They are above the struggles and the, and, and, and the trials that we face. But yet, Lord, you know the enemy is coming at them even harder. The brighter the light that falls, the darker the, the darker the darkness is that we find ourselves in. So, Lord, I'm asking you to pour out your spirit upon this place this morning. Bless each and every one of us. Continue to lead us. And above all, Father, please, in the worthy name of Jesus, save us in your kingdom. These, Lord, and all other blessings we ask in his worthy name. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Elder. I uh, want to share with you this morning and those of you who believe in fasting praying that God will do something extraordinary, something that human uh, call impossible. Our head deacon, Edward Seals, is not well, and it doesn't look good. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I asked him, did he want me to share it with his church family? And he said yes. So I'm going to ask that all of us pray in our private secret closet. A prayer, a selfish prayer. A prayer that will shake heaven's 
doors and windows, the raptors. Uh, Deacon Seal has served the kingdom of God in this church faithfully for many years. He started feeling some discomfort in his stomach and was taken to the hospital and they did some tests. And the result came back that he has pancreatic cancer in the fourth stage. And they've given him two months to be with us. But that's their word. I, I can't get no help up in here. I, I, I heard a songwriter say, whose report will you believe? I don't know about you, but I believe the report of the Lord every day over some doctor from Harvard or Yale or Princeton or uh, LSU or whatever universities they go to because they are learning medicine. That's why they call it practice. But the God that I know does not practice. He, he just does because that's who he is. So I, I want us to stand together and just touch and agree with somebody this morning as we say a special prayer for Deacon Edward Seals. Asking the Lord to change the timeline. Asking him to break up and destroy that casket that the enemy is preparing, asking him to put the dirt back in the hole and refuse that grave to be dug, asking him to heal Deacon Seals. Uh, I asked Deacon Seal, how old are you? Last weekend, he celebrated his 75th birthday. Now, 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 I'm, I'm a Bible reader, and I'm a Bible believer, not when it works for me. The Word says that God has allotted to us 70 years, and by reason of strength, we will go 80 and beyond, but the allotted years are 70. Deacon Seals has gone five years bonus, but I believe that that's a lot that he can still do. And my prayer today, and I pray that you agree with me because the Bible says, if two or three of us agree on anything and ask the Lord, believing he will do it, my prayer is that if Yahweh still has work for Deacon Seals to do, that he will do something that we humans call miracle because a miracle is not what God does. God just does what God does. But we call it a miracle because it's impossible for us. But if he in his divine wisdom knows and has counted the concealed days and realized that his work here is finished, he shouldn't let him suffer. He should allow him to rest because I know that Deacon Seals knows that there is something beyond this life and it's called the resurrection. So I'm going to ask you now to touch somebody next to you as we pray for Deacon Seals this morning. Thou who art our everlasting portion. More than friend and 
right to us. All along this pilgrim journey, oh, Savior, let us walk with thee. Not for fame or worldly pleasure or in vain, this very prayer shall be. Oh, God, gladly, we are willing to suffer. Oh, Master, if you will walk with us, allow us to walk close to thee. Close to thee this morning, all along this teacher's journey. Savior, let us walk close to thee. We recognize, we acknowledge that you are God all by yourself. That you do all things well and that nothing is called impossible to you. And so, God, we are coming today, God, interceding, kneeling, pleading, coming before your all-knowing wisdom and mercy and love and say, God, we bring Edward Seals to you. We bring his body, his mind, his soul, and his spirit. Oh, Yahweh, you who speak and life begins. You who says that you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. You who say you wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health. You who said, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and the doors shall be opened unto you. You who say, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and out of evil to give you a hope and a future. You who said before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I set you aside for special work. You who said you are greater that is in us than the enemy that's in the world. We come to you right now in the name of Yeshua. And on the, the canopy of his blood, the authority of his blood, the one who was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we are healed. This Jehovah God, this Yahweh, the Rafika, the healing God, we bring to you. And was seals this morning, and Yahweh, we say that we know you are able to do more abundantly than anything that we can think or imagine. And if it is your way. Edward Seals get up off his sick bed and defy medical science because you still have work for him to do and a witness for him and a testimony to declare. Then Yahweh, I say, move right now and touch his pancreas and breathe on it and make it anew as if he was just born. Oh God, and we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, I will talk about it wherever I go. Oh God, I will preach that you are able to heal, that you are still in the healing 
business. God, I can say this to you because I remember Sister Omega West some 12, 13 years ago I was called at East Jefferson Hospital and the doctor said she will not make it through the night and y'all need to come and anoint her because her brain is swelling and she cannot survive through the night. And God, we went there with the elders and I touched Sister Omega West's head and prayed this prayer and said, God, you said you give us 70 years and she has not made 70 yet. And so God, we are calling on you. Oh, Yahweh and Omega walked out of that hospital and it's been 13 years and she's still here with us. I know you can hear prayers. I remember when Sister Ivy Jones called me about her nephew. In Jackson, Mississippi, they found him somewhere on a road and they didn't think he was going to make it. And I told Sister Jones, let's pray. And we agreed and pray. And in a few weeks, that young man got up. God, there's nothing that you cannot do. Oh, God, just the other day, one of my good friends, Margaret, called me and she was in pain and hurting and the pain was so excruciating. And I said, Margaret, we got a God who's better than aspirin and Tylenol. He's a healing God. And I said, let's pool our faith and believe and we pray. And I told Margaret, call me this evening and give me the testimony. And God, you answered us. And that evening when Margaret and I talked, she was laughing. The pain was gone this morning. She and I prayed and she said, Pastor, I don't want us to ask anything from God. I just want us to thank him for being a prayer answering God. You are the same God that I'm calling today for my deacon and your son. You love him more than I can ever imagine to love him. But you said to Mary, this and your disciples, this sickness is not unto death. It is so that the glory of God can be shown when they called you and said, Lazarus, your friend was sick. And so you went and stayed four days. When you came, Mary said, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. And you said, Mary, you don't know who you are talking to. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Yahweh, these are not things we've read in some books, some myths, some, 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 some fairy tales and some all wives, tell, these are true happening that you have done as you intervene in the affairs of mankind. And I stand here before this public to say to you, God, if you answer the way we are asking to heal, be concealed, I will tell it wherever I go. I will let men, women, boys, and girls know that my God is a prayer answering God. But if you choose not to answer the way we are asking, then God, I'll say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I will still praise you. I will still worship you. I will still honor you because I know you can do it. So God, we bring deacon seal. And I thank you for 
for allowing me to talk to you with my brothers and sisters holding hands. We are pulling our faith for Deacon Seals. Oh God, hear our prayers. Incline your ears to us and grant us your peace. Not because we deserve it, not because we are worthy of it, but because you love us with an everlasting love. So throw your weight around in this situation. Show up and show out. God, arise and receive your glory. Thine is the kingdom, thine is the power. Thine is the glory forever we pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and begin to bless God right now. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, make some noise up in here. Let's begin to praise him right now so the walls can come down, so healing can take place, so breakthroughs can take place right now. If it were you, you would want somebody to start thanking God in advance for your healing. Come on, somebody shout up in here. Our God is able. You know, people ask me, we God, God is so great. Why he hasn't healed your eyes? I said, none of your business because he, he chooses not to do so. That's why I still praise him because I know he can do it. I have seen him do it. So I have no doubt. He doesn't have, God don't owe me anything. I thank God he saved me. Amen. Now, 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 I, I don't want to forget, today is First Sabbath, and every First Sabbath we have a tradition uh, at this worship experience that we just honor those who are celebrating birthdays and, and, and anniversaries, and, and so if you are celebrating a birthday, can you stand, because we want to serenade you. If, you. if you're celebrating an anniversary, all right, all right. The month of August, the month of August, amen, amen, amen. Uh, I, can't, I can't see the people. Uh, Sister Adam, look around, see. Okay, help, help, your, help your pastor out. All right, Snedeker, okay. All right, amen. Come on, let's bless God for these people. Now, now, all right. Are there any uh, anniversaries, wedding anniversaries? Oh, the Lauren says. Oh, oh. <laughs> where, where, where's my baby at? Come here, come here, baby. Come here. H have, I, have I told you lately? <laughs> uh -uh. What y'all laughing at? I, I, knew, I knew it was this month, August 22nd. <laughs> August 22nd. Oh, man. The Lord hooked me up with this pretty girl. And uh, she's been running after me ever since. <laughs> <coughs> amen, amen. Hey, maestro, can we... Can we, can we? Happy birthday first and a happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday, dear family. Happy birthday, dear family. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear family. Happy anniversary, dear family. Happy anniversary to you and many more.
How many it is? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, adults, I need y'all help because this story is pretty interesting. It's pretty. So, good morning and happy Sabbath to everybody. How many of you have had an older brother or sister? Oh, I see a lot of hands. I do too. Okay, well, today I'm going to tell you a story about two sisters. First, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning and for taking us throughout last night. Please let this story go well for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so this story is about two kids, one named Emily and the other named Tasha. Emily was the youngest sister, and Tasha was the older sister. There was a big difference between Emily and Tasha. Emily would throw fits when she was asked to do her chores. Tasha always had good manners and did her chores without complaining. Emily had a problem with stealing from people. Tasha would always share her things with others. Emily would say bad things about people, while Tasha always said nice things about people. Emily was lazy at school, and Tasha would walk, worked very hard at school. Emily thought going to church wasn't cool. Tasha loved going to church. Now, which one would you want as your friend? No answer? All right, that's a good answer. So one day after school, their mom took them both to get ice cream. This angered Tasha because she felt that Emily didn't deserve any ice cream. Because she was disobedient, it did not listen to her, their mom. Tasha thought that was unfair because she did everything that her mom told her to do. Tasha got mad and yelled at her mom and asked, why didn't they both get ice cream? Because Emily doesn't do right or listen. Tasha felt that she was the better daughter and they shouldn't be treated the same. Mom explained that she loved them both equally and that they both got ice cream because it was a chance to spend time together after a long way, after a long day. Just like in the story of the prodigal son where the younger seemed, so, seemed reckless and the other brother was responsible. The younger brother was celebrated when he returned home, which his older brother angry. But you, what you must understand is, God really does love everyone. God wants to save all people. That's right. That's right. He wants to save the people who follows the rules and are obedient, and he wants to save the people who breaks the rules and who are disobedient. I got you. We all need forgiveness, and God loved us all the same. Now, who wants to pray? I guess I'll do it. Oh, Jaden, you want to come? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for the children's story. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
as the United Choirs come up. Pastor calls it the praise team, but we call it the United Choirs. It's Berean and Faith. Last night, uh, we expected more people to come to choir rehearsal, but when they didn't, we had to change the song. I said, well, Pastor Wegar asked us to sing Standing on the Promises. Can we come up with a song about the promises of God? And so this song says, hold on to Jesus. Just believe in him and trust in his word and hold on. Just hold on. For he promised me if I live right, my battles he would fight. For he promised that he would take care of me. So believe that while we sing that. And when you get the rhythm, start singing it yourself. Because this is not a concert. We are participating in the worship of God.
Take care of me. Do I have any company in thy house? Amen. Amen. He promised that he will take care of us. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord for our praise team. 
combined praise team. Our musicians, come on, bless God for our music, musicians. Amen. And, and, and what about that Nathan Lawrence, huh? Can we? <laughs> amen, amen. I, I am just so thankful for our young people. We uh, have decided that we will allow our young people to minister and that every Sabbath the message that we are preaching, they can break it down in little people's language uh, so that our children can understand and appreciate it and apply it to their lives. And Nathan, I bless God for you. I'm proud of you. And I thank you for taking that story. <laughs> Amen. And breaking it up in chewable bites for our children. Um, you know, um, for several years, and, and, and uh, I don't want her to think I'm talking about her, but my baby girl, she, she stopped me, y'all, from, from encouraging children's story. We were pastoring a particular church, and the children, Landry, will come up for the children's story, and the story was not about the children. It was about the adults entertaining each other. They tell stories that doesn't make no sense to the children. All the adults are laughing and the children are sitting there looking like a cow looking at a new fence. And, 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 and one, one children's story time, the song started to, you know, play and sing. And my little daughter, my last child of faith, Sister Adams, she looked at me as if, Daddy, why are you putting me through this? And, and I felt her, Sister Wolf, and after church, we're on our way home, and she said, Dad, that story is, this is about a six or seven-year-old. That story is so boring. And I said, you know what? No more children's stories. So we stopped children's story at that particular church. Not that children's story is not important, but... If it's not ministering to the children, then we're wasting their time and we're making church horrible for them. And so uh, from that time, I had discouraged the children's story. But just lately, when we did our combined worship experience, I started noticing that the stories that have been told were being effective. And so we, we talked about it at our worship committee, and we decided we wanted to bring back the children's story. But this time, we weren't going to let no grown-ups tell the story unless those grown-ups knew what the story was intended to do for the children. And, and now we've employed our young people, and all they doing a fabulous job. <laughs> Amen. 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 And so I, I bless God for Nathan this morning. Well, I, I'm going to make the promise that uh, Elizabeth Taylor made to her fifth husband. I won't be keeping you long. <laughs> I, I, uh, before I got up, the elder told me, because I asked him to tell me what time it is, he says 20 to 1. So we, we, we're going to get into this message, and then we're going to leave when we're done. What do you say? <laughs> Amen. Stand with me, if you would. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the gospel according to Luke. What book did I say? Now, you know you got to talk back to me because you know I'm not that smart. If I don't hear you since I can see you, I think you didn't understand what I said, and I'll keep repeating myself. We can be here till 430. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, talk back to the preacher. Amen, 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 amen. Luke chapter 15, and we're going to look at verse 25 to 30. Luke chapter 15, verse 25 to 30. We're all going to read together, so get your uh, Bible, whatever you carry your Bible on, iPad, your phone, or whatever. And uh, I don't think our people can put it on the screen, but uh, Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse number 25. When you have it, let me hear you say amen. amen. All right, let's read together. Now the what? Eldest brother was where? In the field, and he did what? Came near and drew nigh to the where? to the house, and what did he hear? Music and dancing. So what did he do? He called one of the servants and asked what? What mean is this? And what did the servant say? Thy brother is come, and what has the father done? Killed the fatted calf because what? He has received him safe and sound. And what happened to the brother? He was angry and would not do what? Go in. So what did the father do? Father came out and entreated him. And he answered his father and said what? Lord, these years, what? I've served thee in what? Neither transgress I none of thy what? Commandments. But what happened? You have never given me a what? Kid, for me to do what? Celebrate with my friends. But this who? Your son. Come on, read verse 30. Who has taken your living and done what with it? With harlots. Has done what? He's come back and you've killed for him the fatted calf. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, the pastor is talking about the miserable older brother syndrome. Come on, pray with me now. Yahweh, the hours come again that your word must be lifted up. For Yeshua, the word said, and I, if I be lifted up, I, Yeshua, will draw all men, all women, all boys, and all girls unto me. So lift him up again today. May Yeshua be seen clearly. May Yeshua be heard and understood without any ambiguity. And when this experience shall have come to a pause, may Yeshua be honored. May Yeshua be obeyed. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory forever. In Yeshua's name, and the people of God say amen, amen. You may be seated under the canopy of the power, the protection, the peace of our one God. The miserable older brother syndrome. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you got it? I know that's bad English, but... <clears throat> I, I want the message to get through. Do you have the older or the miserable older brother syndrome? You see, this parable is uh, the third scene in a four-scene uh, parable taught by our Lord Yeshua the Christ to highlight the magnanimous love of Yahweh for sin for mankind. 
we find this parable, beloved, recorded by Dr. Luke in the 15th chapter of his gospel, beginning with the 11th through the 32nd verses, and it is commonly known as the parable of the prodigal son. The parable of the what, everybody? The prodigal son. We've been studying for the last uh, several months the parables of Yeshua the Christ, and these parables are intended to teach us life lessons of kingdom activity and kingdom business that God intends for mankind post-sin. Yeshua is telling this parable to the scribes, the Pharisees, and those he calls the hypocrites. And in this parable, he highlights three key actors. I tag them the mischievous son, the magnanimous father, and the miserable older brother. Oh, several weeks ago, we dealt with the mischievous son, and we talk about the fact that he let home, took his inheritance, actually disrespected the father, and demanded his inheritance now and took it and went off to the far country and trifled it, wasted it. And when he lost everything, he hired himself out to a farmer and he was sent out to feed pigs. He was so hungry that he started eating the food that the pigs were eating. Then the Bible says he came to his senses. The Holy Spirit moved to me. He said, look at where I'm at and what I'm doing here. When I'm a child of a king, my father has servants that are eating and feeding and sleeping better than I am. I'm getting up and going back to my father. And he did. And the Bible says in our second part of this series where we learn about the love, the eternal and unfathomable love of the magnanimous father, that the father, when he heard that his son was coming and saw him afar off, he ran to him, fell on his neck and kissed him, even though he smelled like rot. A rotten a, a food and pig. The stench was on him. His hair was matted and unkept, and his body looked like he had not bathed for months. The father, because of his love for him, hugged him, and then he restored him to his place by asking his servants to find the finest robe, bathe him in robe him and put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet because the father wanted to show that God will not give up on us easily. And no matter what we've done, where we've done it, how we've done it, with whom we've done it, and for how long we've done it, if we confess our sins, oh, bless his name, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when we repent and come back to God, God will restore us. Do I have any witness in the house today? I'm so glad that the God that I serve does not write me off easily. Men will write me off People will cancel me, but the God that I serve is waiting for me to come back. Uh, and not only did he restore this young man back to sonship, but he affirmed 
and ensured his restoration by throwing a party. Uh-oh, I thought we didn't have a good time at church. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Bible says that he told his servants, kill the fatted calf. Uh, 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 this was not a cow. This was not a bull. This was not a uh, 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 a uh, 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 heifer. This this was a calf. It was a young and tender because the father wanted the people to enjoy chewing on it. Oh, you're vegetarians. I'm sorry for you. <clears throat> but 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 the Bible says. Uh, he said, "Kill the fatted calf and, and and let's have a good time." And they killed the fatted calf. I can imagine him inviting the neighbors and the townspeople, people from other cities and towns celebrating that my son was dead, but he's yet alive. He was lost, uh, but he's now found. Aren't you glad that when we come back to God, he throws a party for us? And so this father throws this party, but there's a problem. And this problem brings us to our subject of discussion this afternoon. And that is the miserable older brother. Somebody say miserable older brother. You know, beloved, we still have the miserable older brothers in Christendom today. This, this is not a story just of yesteryears, but this is a reality that is going on in the church of the living God and in Christendom Today, these miserable older brothers, these people who feel that they know what God wants uh, for the world, and so they're going to constitute Christianity. No, they don't believe that people have the right to choose whether they want to follow God or not. You see, beloved, Yahweh created us in his image and after his likeness, and he gave us something that no other earthly creation has, and that is the gift of free will. Somebody say free will. And he wants us to, to have a relationship with him based on our love for him because he first loved us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, for God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, not after we joined the church, not after we gave up drinking and smoking and lying and cheating and fornication and adultery and LGBTQIA, not while we were, or after we cleaned up, but while we were still messed up from the floor up, Yahweh loved us and gave himself for us. But he's not going to force us to love him. We have to love him based on our evaluation of his love for us and our appreciation of and for that love, we return back to him our love in ourselves. So, Paul says in Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 1, he says, my brothers and sisters, he says, I beseech you now therefore that you will give your bodies as a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable unto God, which is, watch this, your reasonable service. He said that's the least that you can do with all that God has done for you. God is not asking you to die. God is not asking you to go out there and kill yourself. No, God wants you to live for him. He wants you to give a living sacrifice. And for you to do that, Paul says, you got to refuse to be confound to this world, but to transform your mind by renewing it. Somebody say amen. And so God will never force us. He will woo us. He will lavish us with love to let us know that we got hell to shun and heaven to gain. And the devil doesn't like us. He is the father of lies. Uh, he cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But my God says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, but I'm not going to force it on you. And my question today to the Republicans, yes, that's what I said. You know, you know let, me, let me tell you, uh, this for me is no longer a job for making money. You can fire me, but God can't get rid of me because he loves me. And I'm realizing now <laughs> one of the reasons, <laughs> oh, Elder Landry, that the Lord took my sight because he doesn't want me to be scared based on who's in the audience. I can't see nobody. So I don't care who's here. You can be the GC president. You can be Kamala Harris or, or Donald Trump. I can't see you, so let the chips fall where they may. But with where our world is now, it is high time that we preach the truth of the Bible. And I have made up my mind, if I got to do it by my lonesome, I'm going to tell the truth, for ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I detest abortion. I hate abortion. It is wrong, it is sin, it is wickedness. I detect, detest and abhor fornication and lying and adultery and stealing and cheating. It is wrong, it is wicked, it is sin. I detest and abhor the lifestyle of LGBTQIA. That's what I said. I abhorred it. I detest it. It is wicked. It is wrong. It is sinful. But I cannot constitute or encourage anyone who has the nerve to do something that Yahweh did not do. To constitute and establish in the laws of a government, what God has not established. And anyone who is saying they want to establish a religious state, I'm going to speak against them. Oh, you see how quiet y'all gotten? Now I'm going to preach real hard now. We are living, beloved, in a dangerous time when people think they can establish a religious state because they don't like what other people are doing with their lives. God says he is going to judge our lives one day whether they be good or evil. He has not given any human being the authority to establish a state where they can demand what other people do with their lives. You know what he said? He said 
in John 13 and verse 35. You need to write some of these scriptures down because it's very important. It's high time, beloved, that we start reading and studying and memorizing the scripture because sooner or later, these people that you think are in your favor will come and take all of your Bibles because it starts with there and then it narrows to their time, their kind of Christianity. If we establish a Christian state, whose Christianity will everybody have to follow? Will it be the Jehovah Witnesses? Will, will it be the, 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 the Catholics? Will it be the Seventh-day Adventists? Will it be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints? Will it be the Bahá'í Baha faith? Who's, who's Christianity? Will it be the Kojic? Jesus said in John 13, 35, by this, by what everybody? By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, you are my followers. He didn't say by enforcing Sabbath. He didn't say by enforcing uh, 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 religious rights uh, uh, where one group have a right that other people don't have. No, he didn't say by tearing down and shooting people in abortion centers. He didn't say by uh, 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 passing laws that will cause a 10-year-old rape victim in Ohio to have to leave and go somewhere else to get rid of the memory of that person that assaulted them. A 10-year-old for crying out loud, beloved. No, I don't believe in abortion. I think it's wrong. I don't think anybody should kill a fetus in their body. But that is the person's body. Leave it between them, their doctor, and their God. And, and the thing that that messes me up, Elder Wilson, is if these people are so conscious about life, why is it that they are flooding my community with all of these guns and young black men are killing each other and they won't do anything about it? They are police. When we call them for help, they are shooting us in the face but they care so much about life. No, my friends, they don't care about life. They want to be in control of your life and my life. And it's high time that those of us who have a microphone and have a few people to listen to us to tell the world that we are not going to stand for it. We got to preach the truth. Now, I don't give a care who you vote for, but don't shove down my throat that I need to vote for a particular person because, and, and you know, you know let, me, let me give you three things about these uh, miserable older brothers. The first is their foul spirit of self-righteousness. Somebody said foul spirit of self-righteousness. Look, look, look at, look at the story. I'm not making this up. If you read verse 25 of Luke chapter 15, uh, it says they're having a party, right? This miserable brother comes home, and uh, he, he hears the noise. There's a party going on. He said, what's going on in there? Oh, your brother. The one that was on crack, the one that was in the Angola that they gave 25 years and everybody thought he was going to die there, somehow the Lord had mercy on him. He, he got out 
And he came at 5100 Osborne Avenue. And Pastor, we gone and the church is having a good time. God, it's a second chance. No, a third chance. Uh-uh, a 50th chance. A hundred chance. Don't be looking at me cross eye. Because if the truth be told and we're told and we will open some of our classes, God has given us 45, 55, 65, 100, 200 chances. I can't get no help up in this house. And you would think he would have been happy. But he's so self-righteous. The Bible said he was angry. I ain't going back to that church anymore. You know why? Because we God used to hang out in Atlantic City and hang out in the streets of Southwest Philadelphia. All of a sudden, he said he's some pastor with all that crack he smoked. And now he's standing behind that pulpit. I ain't going up in here. They're self-righteous selves. You don't have to say amen. I'm a preacher anyhow. He had a spirit, a foul spirit of self-righteousness. He said, I'm not coming in. And then the second thing we see in the life of these people is instead of them getting happy about the repentant, mischievous son, they, they have this spirit of entitlement. Somebody say entitlement. Look at what he says to the dad. I've been here with you all these years, and I haven't broken any of your laws, and you ain't get me no fatted cows. What you talking about? If you read the parable from the beginning, Verse 15 says, a man had two sons. Oh, bless his name. And, and the younger came to him and said, give me the portion of the goods that belong to me. And the Bible says, he divided them with both of them. Read the text. But you know what? These miserable older brothers, they have a warped sense of the love of God. Minister Nick, they see God as an iron-fisted tyrant that is just waiting for you to make mistake for him to club you in the head and put you in the lake of fire. They don't see God as a loving creator who wants to have a relationship with us. They see God as someone that you got to serve or else you're going to burn in hell. And so they're not serving God out of love. They're serving God out of fear of going to hell. And, and so here it is. I'm going there. The stuff that they want to do and love to do. They're too scared to do it. So when they see the mischievous doing it, they get all mad and miserable. Because they want to do it. They want to wear that short skirt. But they're too scared. And so when they see that young lady showing the little skin, they ain't worried about God. Uh, or their love for God, they're mad because they ain't wearing it. Look at them sinking in the choir with all that stuff on. You know you want to wear it. But you're too scared. Turn to your neighbor and say, you scared. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what it is. They, 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 they see God as a do it to go to heaven, God. Well, I got news for you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 said, By grace are ye saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works. 
I don't care whether you're the GC president, you're the union president, you're the North American division president, you're the conference president. I don't care you are Pastor Wegar preaching and jumping at the, up and down here. You are not saved by what you do. You are saved like every one of us is saved by grace through faith. So then why do I do what I do, Elder Lawrence? I do it because I'm so thankful that I'm saved. I do it because I want to show gratitude for the salvation that God has granted to me. That's why I like that late philosopher Whitney Houston. And she said, you remember when we were children? Oh, you see how quiet y'all got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about the children. But when you think about them, remember when you were out there cutting the rug. Yeah, remember when you were out there doing what you were big enough to do. You know, I always say, and, and, and I heard this in one of Dr. King's speeches, Elder Wilson. He said, everybody is obeying the, 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 the uh, 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 everybody is, is, nobody's obeying the Ten Commandments. Everybody's trying to obey the Eleventh. Thou shall not get caught. Because you're not a sinner till you get caught. You know, I, I, yeah, I'm going to say it because I, this is, this is, I, I'm, I'm, uh, the Holy Ghost is on me. Don't push me. I, I remember when I was young in the church, some of the people I was sleeping with, you know, we, 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 yeah, folk, I'm, I'm telling you real stuff. You know, we'll sing in the choir Friday evening, and then we'll leave choir rehearsal and go and do some stuff, and then come to church on Sabbath morning and sing in the choir, and God is strike us down. You, could, could you believe how merciful God is? That's why I love him the way I do. That's why I preach this gospel. And at the nerve of some of those same people, to start talking about their friends who got pregnant. And I, in my mind, I said, because your birth control worked and theirs didn't. Yeah, I'm going there. So all of a sudden, you so holy. Get off that birth control and give us three months. You, you, you see how we are? That's, that's these, that's the, the, Older, miserable older brother syndrome. Somebody say miserable older brother. They're doing the same thing. And also they have this entitlement. God is supposed to do this for me because I'm the pastor of the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church on 4555 Fairfields Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. Man, get out of my face. And then the third thing is they always showcase other people's sins and not themselves. I'm talking about the miserable older brother. Look, look, look. Go to the text. You got to read that story again. I'm not making it. Look, look at what he says in verse 30. Your son, he doesn't say my brother. If you and I have the same father, at least call me your brother. But he said, I'm entitled to all of this and you didn't give it to me. But your son who had gone out there and wasted your living with hollers. How do you know that? <laughs> Let me tell you a story. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. I was living in a particular city. That was before I was born again, but I was still going to church. Just like some of our young people. That's why I'm praying for these young people, and I love them. And some of y'all older ones, too. And uh, that Saturday night, I was in a particular nightclub. And, 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 you know, my eyes, I told you God took my eyes for a reason. Because he doesn't want me to see some of that stuff no more. But, but I, I, was, I, was, Nick, I was very mischievous, right? 
So I'm in the club and I'm doing my little thing. And, and I turned and I saw a certain pastor. Yes, I say it. A certain pastor. And when they turned, their eyes and mine caught up. And they didn't think I saw them first. So they jetted out. And me be mischievous. I'm like, oh, you in here? I started chasing them. I kid you not on a Sabbath afternoon. I left my partner on the floor. I said, give me a minute. And I'm going through there, you know, trying to get to the door because this club was full. Because I wanted to tap that pastor on the shoulder and say, you having fun, brother? <laughs> and he ran out there. He was a youth, young pastor. No, he wasn't a youth pastor, but he was young. I think he was probably in his 40s at that time. He ran out there, got in his car, and jetted. And some said, get in your car. But I said, nah, I got my date on the floor. I ain't letting nobody take her. So I went back in. But, but what I'm saying is, beloved, everyone is obeying the 11th commandment. Listen to the news, all these people that get up here and talk about these people on TV, how ugly and nasty and filthy. They're the ones that they keep it rested. And then you hear on the news. And then they, now all of a sudden they invoke grace. Well, God is a merciful God. Well, oh, you just found that out, didn't you? You know? Uh, uh, but, but, but look at how he describes his brother. Yes, his brother went out there. Yes, he messed up. Yes, he trifled his life. But the Holy Ghost brought him back. We all should be happy because God is still in the saving business. I'm listening to the news. And these people got the nerve to talk about, well, you know, Kamala, she is a DEI. And, and she got where she got because she was sleeping with an older man, Mayor Brown in California. And I said, oh, oh, you got a problem with sleeping with somebody you ain't married to. Well, do you know Trump is on his third adulterous life? Don't look at me funny. I know you're scared. Oh, pastor, you can be preaching. No, I'll preach it. Fire me. Go to Mark chapter 10, and you will see Yeshua says, if you married a man and a woman, if you, first, if you divorce your husband or your wife, and that divorce is not because of pornea on the part of the other person, fornication, and you married somebody else, you are living in adultery. And a woman that marries you is living in adultery. This man have had three. And in his third one, while she's having a baby for him, he's sleeping with a porn star. And you're going to indict Kamala? Come on, y'all. And black people, we just gullible. We're selling our souls for money. Well, you know, uh, gas prices going up and, and you know, and this and that. We are selling our souls for money instead of standing for righteousness. Sin is sin. Doesn't matter who commits it. And as the pastor of this church, I got to educate you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't stop there, verse 17 of John 3. 
for God sent not, oh bless his name, his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's why when that father saw this nasty, filthy, mischievous son coming home, he ran and hugged him. Because God loves us. And as much as I detest sin and the activities of sin, I have to love the sinner. And I have to tell them that God loves them. And if they are willing to repent, his arms are open and he's ready to save them. You know why? Because living, he loves them. Dying, he saved them. Buried and he carried their saints far away rising. He justified them. Freedom forever. And one day, Somebody help me say one day, one day, one day, one day he's coming back, glorious day. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forevermore of his saving grace on the streets of glory, there to raise my voice. Cares her past, home at last, ever to rejoice. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus one day. If you are here today, all everybody standing, I'm opening the doors of the church. Maybe you are that mischievous younger brother, or that miserable older brother. And you are here today to say, God, I want to come. I want to come to you. I want to love my brother and my sister as myself. But more than that, I want to love them like you love me. If that's you, can you walk out of your seat and come so that we can pray together? God is getting ready to do something awesome in this world. You know what it is? He's getting ready to come to get his children. And, and, and is there somebody standing here? Come on, put your hands together. But people get up. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. He, he's, 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 he's getting ready to change this thing, beloved. And he wants us to preach this gospel that saves sinners because he loves them. Are you one of those? Are you a mischievous brother, a sister, and you want to come back home? Would you get up out of your seat and come? Don't worry about who's looking at you. This is between you and God alone. Or if you are that miserable older brother or older sister, you don't know how to show God's love without tearing people down. And this message has touched your heart. And you said the same power of the blood that saved me and changed me and nurtured me and is maturing me in Christ can do it for somebody else. You want to come and say, God, change my life. Help me to be a better witness a loving witness, a caring, a concerning witness. Give me a passion for the kingdom. If that's you, would you get up out of your seat and come? And as they're coming, let's put our hands together and celebrate them. Somebody needs to say yes today. Somebody needs to say yes today. Come here, my friend. Come here, my friend. Who's this? This is Aaron. This brother always come. Can you stretch your hand toward this young man? And let's pray for him right now. God, I thank you for Aaron. 
I thank you for this young man. He came here with a testimony. He got baptized. He been fighting this good fight, but he can't fight it alone. So, God, I thank you that every time the appeal is made, he comes up and says, God, I'm still coming and coming and coming, and I'll keep coming until you hold me completely. Oh, Yahweh, I touch him right now on the head. Pour your Holy Ghost on him. Baptize him with the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, and may he do mighty works for you. And I pray for that person who is in the audience who's scary to come because they don't want anybody to think that they're that mischievous brother or that miserable older sibling. Oh, God, don't give them any peace until they totally surrender to you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in Yeshua's name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Love you, man. Powerful word for the bishop this morning. This time we would like for our deacons to come forward to receive the morning tithes and offerings. We're going to ask the ushers if they would to lead out in directing you to the front, keeping in mind all of the various obligations that uh, we are encountering as a result of trying to prepare the various churches as well as the other Keep the air going. Is Pleasant in here this morning? Do you? All right. Guess what? The utility bills are going up. We can't be satisfied with the same amount we've been doing. But as we, God blesses us, we got to make sure that God's house is as pleasant as our house. In order to do that requires an increase, not a decrease. Come at this time, Ursus. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We thank you for providing us with the necessities of life, food, clothing, and shelter. And as we return to you, the tithe, the tenth of all of our increase, and a free will offering, dear Lord, that's a token of our love and the expression of our gratitude for your goodness. Bless both the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Subscribe, comment, or share. Happy Sabbath Church. I have a card to read from Sister Janiah Franklin. Um, okay, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and run it over. Luke 6, 38. Praying the Lord blesses your giving heart in abundant measure. Thank you. Thank you, Berean family, for blessing me and in not acknowledging my graduation. Also, a very special thanks to Sister Parker, Bates, Scott, and Smart for your gifts. I love you all, Janiah Franklin. Thank you. And one other thing, business meeting, 11 to 1, August 11th, here at the Osborne property. Thank you. Yes, just a matter. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I'm sure that all of you by now know me, probably my phone number and where I live. But that's okay. That's a good thing. Uh, this, this afternoon, I'm up here to talk to you a little bit about the picnic on tomorrow. Tomorrow, there will be a picnic at Faith. Everyone is welcome to come. We're asking you to come out. The picnic is from 10 to 3. It's a church fellowship. We need to fellowship together other than inside the church building. So this is what this fellowship is all about. So we're asking you to come. There will be waiting pools for the little ones, for the little people, because it's going to be hot out there. So we want to keep them cool. So the waiting pool will be there. Later in the day, we'll have uh, the older children will have, have an opportunity to play with the water balloon so that they can cool off. With this, um, if they have water soakers or whatever, they can bring those. And remember, with everything, you have to be responsible, okay? It's not out there to try to kill anybody. To Remember those that don't want to get wet, don't wet them up. Just the people that will be in that area. There will be other board games and other games out there that you can play. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let all things be done decently and in order. With that being said, there's food at the picnic. There is plenty of food at the picnic, and everyone is welcome to have some of whatever is there. It's not my food. It's all of our food. We've all donated. We've all pitched in, and it's there. However, remember, there's always someone behind you that would like to have some as well. So if you have children, please fix their plates with only what they're going to eat at that time. If they want some more later, then more will be there. At the end, <laughs> at the end of the picnic, no pasta, no, pit, no fish. At the end of the picnic, there will be to-go boxes given at the end of the picnic. At the end, I am truly a stickler about the end, okay? Don't come at 10 o'clock and ask me for a to-go box. It's not going to happen, okay? So please don't do that. Whatever is left at the end of the picnic, remember, you're welcome to have it. But the thing is, if it was good to you, it's good to somebody else. So please take some and leave some for some for others. When the picnic is over, cleanup is for all of us, okay? Don't get your little to-go box and get in the car and leave the paper for everybody else to pick up, okay? Please don't do that. If anybody knows me, they know I will tap you on your window and say you didn't help clean up, okay? Because with everything that has been done in preparation for this picnic, sister girl is tired. So I don't want to pick up paper. So in order for us to all have a good time, we all can fellowship together. We can all eat and laugh and play together. 
we're all going to clean up together as well. So if there are any questions, if you have any suggestions, I, I pray that I have tried to cover everything. And if there's something that you want to donate, you don't have to call me now. Just bring it. You don't have to call and ask me. It's okay. It is okay for you to bring whatever your mind, your heart desires. It's fine. With that being said, any questions or concerns, I'll be here a few minutes after church, and I will try to answer your questions. Have a happy Sabbath. No fish, Pastor. No fish. I go do the music now. Just sing. Okay, good. bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now, henceforth, and forever. And the people of God say amen. of reflection and our ushers will usher you out. God bless you. Have a good weekend.